<laughs> well, hello, hello. Welcome to this hello. week's episode of the Success with Soul podcast. I am so excited to be here with our very own Olivia Bless, who is our operations admin. Olivia, welcome to the Success with Soul podcast. Hey, Indira, I'm so excited. Yay. So um, Olivia is the newest member of our team. So please tell us a little bit about who you are, what part of the world you're in. Yes. So um, correction, I'm actually the operations assistant. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just want to, you know, credit to JC for being the admin. Um, yeah, so I am, well, currently I'm in Raleigh, Durham area of North Carolina, but I live in Madrid, Spain. I've lived there for the last two years. So if I was there, I could show you the lovely European views, but I'm here for the summer. So <laughs> nice. Yes. Um, and like you mentioned, you are the operations assistant. JC is our admin. So tell us about your role in the company. Yeah, so I came on to definitely help out JC, our amazing tech guru, um, with a lot of the tasks that, especially more so like customer client service. So, um, and I help Kate, like Kate and others manage their inboxes. So. If you, if a, someone emails us or emails Kate, there's a good chance that I will be the one responding. And I love that part of my job for sure. Um, and then, yeah, just helping out, sort of filling in the cracks with backend systems or also starting to get a little bit more into writing some emails and helping with that creative contribution as well. So assisting, as it says in my, in my job description role. So tell us a little bit about what your previous experience before working with Team KK was like. Yeah, so before, so I'm a Gemini, and that is very evident in my resume before working with Team KK. Um, a lot of my work was in the nonprofit sector. So before before this directly, I did work as teaching English um, in Spain, which was a big reason why I moved there. Um, before that, I was managing an educational program at a nonprofit in Orlando, Florida, where I lived at the time. I worked at another nonprofit. Um, and because nonprofit work always doesn't pay the bills all the way, I did a lot of serving and coffee shop work, which is where my love for customer service was born or realized um and then I've also done like freelance writing and social media work for different clients along the way as well so a little smattering of different things here and there for the last several years since I graduated so yeah so that's definitely a mixed bag I would say I'm learning astrology and that's something that we say when people have um different elements for their sun moon and rising and so yeah. I'm wondering, like, what would you say is your zone of genius then? Definitely a mix of, I mean, what comes out in the customer work, customer service work. Like I'm, I'm, I really love working with people and understanding them, helping them solve problems, helping them grow, develop. Um, so that is definitely an area that I, I thrive in and as well as, like writing and some of the creative work as well um in terms of like yeah producing content that's engaging for people and that makes them think or grow or offers them something so um yeah that's definitely where my passions lie and most of the time my jobs have somehow integrated one of those two things so awesome so this is a, a little bit like off topic um, in terms of zone of genius, but I'm just wondering like what or which of our team values do you feel like you embody the most? And I can remind you what our values are. We are scrappy growth oriented achievers. We actually care. We make mistakes. We're always learning. We are boundary pushing confident badasses who ask, why not us? We take care of ourselves and we leave the world a better place. Oh, man. Um, 
they're all amazing things to embody and I'm striving for all, all of them. I think naturally, I definitely resonate a lot with we actually care. Um, we, I really do. And, you know, it is interesting sometimes like, um, not, to, yeah, I, I care. I care too much sometimes, I think, which has been a, a growing process for me. But yeah, I, I think that I see that too in the, in, in our team, like everyone really does care about each client and talking through a lot of the emails that come through, you know, like being intentional, um, with how we interact with people. And, um, ooh. <laughs> and then learning always learning I'm I definitely am like a lifelong learner so I love that I love to see every every challenge every good thing as a learning opportunity so and I'm learning a lot here for sure I love that <laughs> when you look at our company culture like what's one thing that people might be surprised about like team KK or or even Kate hmm yeah. Um, I think, you know, we talk about like that we learn like again to the learning, like we learn from our mistakes and it's not like, it's something that's easy to say, but a lot of times, like, I don't think our work culture in general, like in the country advocates for that attitude. So it was surprising to me to see that in action um, actually being on the team, being like, you know, even seeing Kate be like, I made this mistake and like seeing it as a learning opportunity and everyone sort of rallies to help rectify things. So that is, was so, it's still surprising sometimes. Um, and yeah, and I think also like working with Kate, you know, she's mentioned before, like she, I think she can be a little self-critical in terms of like her leadership of a team and she's been open about like how that was a challenge for her at least at the beginning I'm sure she would still say the same and I'm like I feel like she is great at like trusting her team members and asking for their opinions and really like being part of a team so um yeah I I would love for people to know that like that's she's actually a great leader so yeah yeah, yeah I think I think we all agree with that I think that our team is so successful and that's a testament of our leader, which is Kate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so what piece of advice would you give to someone <laughs> who is hiring for your position? I would definitely say that, you know, for my position, there's, I think, and I saw like this with you guys too, like there's, there's a balance that's needed between hiring, you know, an operations assistant. So like someone who has the hard skills to be able to assist, they're not always the one like creating or brainstorming. Um, who, so who has like a heart for what they're doing and then like operations, you know, that they can actually get stuff done and troubleshoot, um, but then also, you know, for whatever your team culture is, which, you know, in my hiring interview process, like really making sure that this person can gel with the team. And I think for the most part, like, you know, you guys recognize that like I could learn the things I didn't know already. Um, so having a good balance of like, if she, if this person like gels with our culture, like we can make sure that they learn the things they need to know, but also, you know, with the position, this act, this role, like making sure that I had the skills to come in and, and not be too overwhelmed when I, when I started. So. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so I hired you mm -hmm. and I, all, I, I do have to say that, um, for me, it was, what impressed me most about Olivia was not so much her hard skills because we have um, one of the things that I love about our team is our SOPs. So yeah. we have SOPs for everything and anything. And so I'm a believer that if you find an amazing candidate as Olivia was that has the soft skills that we know is like such a match for the team, the hard skills can be learned. 
and we have SOPs in place. And it, it's like, sometimes you really need to balance. I mean, that's not to say that you're going to hire someone who has the soft skills, but has, a, for like example, a tech VA for Kartra, and they have, they don't even know what Kartra is. I don't mean that, right? <laughs> but to really strike a balance of, yeah, they have all the hard skills, but as we had a candidate who had all checked off all the boxes, but when it came to you, like, is this person really going to mesh with our team? We were like, nope, not at all. So, you know, I love that you bring that up because I think a lot of the times entrepreneurs have this checklist of what they want and they forget that soft skills are just as important. Yeah. And I think your interview process too, like really allowed for getting to know that, you know, like I had two or three interviews, yeah. like two with you, I, I don't know, quite a few. And then the long, like a very in-depth like questionnaire. So it was like, they're really putting in the work to make sure you hire someone that will gel and hopefully stay for a, a long time, forever, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 I love that you brought that up too. One of the things that we are trying to do here at team KK is to build a team that is going to grow mm -hmm. with us and stay with us long-term. So I, I love that you mentioned that. Yeah. So tell us a fun fact about you, Olivia, like some sort of, you know, like what's something that our audience would be like, Ooh, um oh gosh I always struggle with this I mean my go-to which I yeah I don't mean to sound braggy but I've I've been to 22 countries um yeah <laughs> that's amazing I'm so yes. jealous it's I mean I'm so I'm so blessed like and you know I could talk for days about like getting creative with your finances to be able to travel because ultimately that's that's what it came down to um but yeah I've I've been to I mean some interesting places I've definitely enjoyed like India um Ukraine was amazing um Sweden you know, Costa Rica is amazing, you know, Honduras. I mean, some interesting places that a lot of people probably have gone to as well and others that I'm really, really loved um, the unique experience. So yeah, I, I love to travel. <laughs> so can I ask, were you able to, you know, facilitate that kind of travel because you work remotely? Definitely a big part of it and a big reason why I love teaching and I loved like last two years teaching but I wanted to make a shift back to remote work because yeah and my family lives all over the world so it was important to me to invest in a, a work life where I could see them more regularly um yeah but also I was traveling quite a bit when I was not working remotely and um so yeah it's just figuring out your priorities and how you spend your vacation time and and different things so yeah so I, I, I'm going to ask this question as the newest member of our team coming into um, Team KK. Gosh, I remember the first week you're like, oh, it's a lot. And then <laughs> like the next week. So is there something uh, it, that we do that you think like, wow, all entrepreneurs should be doing, all businesses should be doing this. They should implement this as part of their team. Oh gosh. And I just said something the other day in a meeting and I, I, I think what you mentioned was your, the 15, five. Yes. Wait, I mentioned it in the 15, five. I think oh, that gosh. you mentioned like everyone should, or, or was it run like clockwork time tracking? Um, yeah, the truth is I've had that thought so many times that I, it's hard to like remember one because uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely, I definitely think that the, um, the check-ins that we do, like you mentioned the 15, five, which I, yeah, like we do such great check-ins every day and every week at the end of the week. So, um, and again, with the intentionality and we care, like everyone reads them, everyone digests them. So that's amazing. Like in terms of really bonding as a team, um, I wish I could remember the specific one I said, because it, it was something that I was just like, this is so good. I'd have to go back and try to find it. We could. Yeah. It, so what, what, what Olivia is saying, um, so we do end of day check-ins 
So first of all, our work week is Monday through Thursday, which is amazing. <laughs> that we everyone paid for implement. it. <laughs> um, so Monday through Wednesday, we do end of day check-ins where we come into our Slack channel and we just answer some quick questions. What are your wins? What are you celebrating? Where are you stuck? What are your challenges? You know, what are you, what's your focus for tomorrow? And we do that as a team to, um, not so much to micromanage, but rather to like support one another, mm -hmm. um, to know where, you know, to just kind of check the pulse on a team. We're all working remotely. So this really helps us to feel like we are working together. And then on Thursday, we do our 15 five, which I know other team members have mentioned, and it's an amazing, just, you know, you take 15 minutes, um, to just write down basic, take 15 minutes and it should take your manager five minutes to read. So those are the guidelines. And I believe that this comes from profit first, if I remember correctly, and we just adjusted it a little bit to kind of ask some questions that are relevant to, you know, our culture, you know, and, and those questions really can be like, what felt hard this week? What was easy? What do you want to grow on? What's your mantra for next week? And it's just amazing that our team does that. I've never ever worked for a company that does either end of day, every day or, you know, the stand up. So yeah. I do have to say that I think it's magnificent. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And I, I think, you know, the, I feel like it's like a no brainer, but I'm going to mention it just as a reminder, like the, the work-life balance boundaries of this company are amazing. Like you mentioned, we work Monday to Thursday and that is respected. We have like, you know, our, you know, whatever, nine to five hours, whatever they may be. And like, those are respected. So like working from home, never the pressure to like respond to a Slack at 10 at night. Um, and it's like, it's amazing because we get everything done. We're like, this company has grown so much in, in a few years. So it's like, you can run a successful company, giving your workers like the freedom to be able to live their lives and it's just a lie. It's a myth that the American work culture tells us where like you have to be available all the time and work all the time to get things done. That's not true. So yeah. um, every company should take a hard look at it for sure. But yeah, I love that. And I, I mean, we are genuinely practicing what we preach and teach yeah. inside of the incubator. Yeah, 100%. So Olivia, this is my favorite part. This is the part of the podcast, that, which we call the lightning round. So I'll just ask you, I ask everyone the same questions. Don't overthink it, whatever comes to mind. So the first one is, what's your favorite way to make time for self-care? Definitely a quiet time alone. That would include either like a coffee or wine, depending on the time of the day. And no phone, probably a book or um, something I love, like I need to turn my mind off. So reading a book or watching Netflix, but I know that I need to balance with that. So um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So what's one tool or strategy that you use to help with time management? Definitely um, my my calendar, I mean, my, my little app, like Google calendar on my phone and I block out my times. I use all the time, like reminders, like do this in two hours or whatever. Like, um, yeah, because I, my, yeah, I, I definitely use that a lot. And then we've talked about too on the team, like in terms of like getting things done in a work day, I kind of have a hierarchy in my mind of like what things need to get done that require a lot of brain energy and knowing myself, like I'm more productive in the mornings. And so I try to schedule out like the work that I do that would require more brain energy in the mornings and the hierarchy of like who needs, who's depending on me for this and, and whatnot. And then the things that would be less, you know, energy consuming. I, leave for the afternoon so definitely like um being aware of the the tasks I have to do and my energy levels and then using my calendar to just like plan them out 
I love that. You know what's so funny? I just had an interview with an incubator client and that's exactly what she does. She does she does like levels of like, okay, um, like what's going to have the most impact and, you know, requires the least effort. And she kind of does that. And mm -hmm. she uses the cyclical living mm -hmm. to also pair, to begin to understand like, oh, this is going to take maximum effort, but I you know, in terms of like my, my cyclical cycle, it's not going to work. So I thought that was awesome that she was doing that. And I love that you do that as well. Yeah. So you mentioned reading. So I'm curious, what's the most powerful business mindset entrepreneurial book that you've ever read? Um, I would have to say maybe not ever, but recently, and that has stuck with me, is one called Contagious, How Things Catch On, um, or Why Things Catch On by Jonah Berger. And it's more like marketing mindset, but not, not only. And it's just like a really, a bit of a higher level think about like why certain things become popular or people are interested in them. Um, so yeah, that one has definitely made an impression in me and just in like in, in marketing and in putting, you know, yourself in the shoes of the person that you're trying to serve and figuring out like what appeals to them. What do they need? I love that. So um, what would you say is your favorite quote or mantra or affirmation? Um, you know, this is what you use when things get tough or you feel like giving up um hmm, hmm. I've always lived by ever since I was in like middle school my dad told me some advice that if something scares you you should probably do it as long as it doesn't hurt like yourself or other people um and I've always lived by that I think you know what I love too that we talked about is like the imposter syndrome and um I think, yeah, at the core of a lot of things, like hard days is like fear of like not succeeding. And so, yeah, that's a big one that I live by of like, don't let fear stop you from doing something. Um, yeah. I love that. And finally, this is a success with soul podcast, right? So what does success with soul mean to you, Olivia? I think definitely knowing my values of how I want to live my life. And I, you know, as maybe is evidenced by my resume and my past jobs, I do have a tendency of like living my life in a way of like, this is interesting now. So I'm going to do this now. Um, I'm not a big planner, but I think I've always had to be aware of like, okay, but what are my values? What do I want to invest in? And knowing yourself and being, giving myself permission to like care. I mean, I'm an Enneagram too. I'm a, I'm a people pleaser. So a lot of times my decisions are made like based on what other people expect or want. So I think that's the soul part for sure is knowing yourself and tending to your soul, to my soul and allowing her to grow and like, and blossom and um, I think that's success for me. I mean, is, I think it, yeah, it's a kind of a niche answer to like people who could relate with living a life a lot of times for others. And so right now, at least in my season of life, it's to live my life for me and to feel every day like I've, I've done the things I've done and invested in things I invested in because it's what feeds my soul, so. I love yeah. that. So that's it for today. We have met Olivia. She is the newest member of our team, but we love her and she has fit right in. Like she's always been with us and I loved it. Thank you so much, Olivia. Thanks, Indira. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye everyone. <laughs>